Do you want to get the phone? I'm kind of busy. Testing. Anything that you really want in life is always really f***ing hard to get, and, and YouTube is no different. So the hurdle's a little bit higher now, but the opportunity is still there. And I end this... Hello guys, welcome to another Louisy21 podcast, the first of 2019, and oh boy what a year it's been, welcome, and if you made it, congrats, because whoever you are, whatever you did, that was probably a difficult year, like every year probably is, for most of us, more some more than others, but at the same time, there was a lot of good things that went on, I hope for most of you as well, for me there was so much of both, good and bad. I don't know how to put it into words, but yeah, just a bit of a, a run through of like what's been going on recently, since the last podcast, I haven't really uploaded much at all, really. I uploaded my first video of 2019 yesterday, so this is technically the second time I'm uploading, and yeah, if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, yeah, um, that's probably really unprofessional, my phone is ringing every time it's like little bro's got it, but... Do you want to get the phone? I'm kind of busy. Even he's not getting... No, he's got it. Um, yeah. Save the future is written on this top. See that? And tell you what, guys. Saving the future is, is, is really important. Um, I wore this top on New Year's Eve just to send a message to people like, the future is now, technically. Like, save the future is in this year. Make the world a better place. In whichever way you can. You know, I'm, I'm looking over here. I've got a collection of books, yeah. And one of them happens to say Malcolm X. And I haven't read it yet. And I should. Because I hear that's really uh empowering story. Of course, if you follow your history. You know, I've got Andrea Pilo over this side as well. I think before I play. Damn, the phone again. So, Andrea Pirlo uh, is his biography, basically. I think before I play. That's really inspirational. You can give that a read at some point. I've got so many other books. I've got, obviously, Anticlidis. Anthony Kalidis. Kaidis. There's no L. Anyway, lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm currently reading that biography. I haven't finished it yet. But speaking of books, this is really random, isn't it? But, yeah... Um, I have ordered the latest, I mean, the, well, it probably is the latest, um, biography by Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, The Rock Says, the book's called, um, yet to open it, I've got it actually, still in the pack, I think, but yeah, it's one of the first things I ordered this year, because I happened to be watching Logan Paul's podcast and he mentioned it, the guy he had on, um, I can't remember his name. But the guy he did the interview with about the whole suicide prevention, and we had him on Impulsive, and he was talking about this book by The Rock that's really inspirational. Um, so I thought I'd get it, you know. And nowadays it's easy, and it just click of a button, you can order what you want. But anyway, let's get on with this podcast. If the phone would stop ringing every time, I swear on the first podcast or the second one, it must have been like four times. The phone kept ringing, but guys, new mic, new webcam. Just, I'm just looking at my phone now, literally. Just still can't believe 2019. It just looks weird. It's not right. It's 2019. It's a weird number. But yeah, um, what a Christmas, probably the best Christmas I've ever had, guys. And yeah, if you haven't had one as good as mine... I feel sorry for you because, well, you probably won't because won't have because you're not me. But we all have family that we love and that are dear to us and friends as well. And a lot of us mix the two, you know. Your closest friends are your family in some ways. For a lot of people, that's true. Um, yeah, so I should probably put my phone on silent, shouldn't I? So many... Um, so many family members were over, and we really made the most of it. 
Well, I did anyway. But I'll tell you what, guys. This podcast is just part of my, you know, my revamp of the channel in some ways. And it's a new year, new me. I've already, obviously, I started this last year, but um, I feel in the last 12 months on the channel, I've come a long way, haven't I? No. To where I am now, the equipment I use now, you know, it's another level. Not that I'm earning any more money or any money at all. But... Mute, yay. Finally muted my phone. Um, anyway, at the end of the day, it's not all about the money. Um, and I mean, when it comes to the channel, with a lot of support from family and friends, uh, it's, all, it's all we talk about, really. You know, um, it's all I tend to be doing, <laughs> really. It's like, you know, I put a post on Instagram, like, uh, you know, whatever you're doing this year, just work hard. If you don't know quite what you're doing, be willing to work hard and you end up doing something. But yeah, as I was saying, I wanted to talk about family and I've got too many of them, basically. I've got too much of a big family. It's just, And it was extended this year because one of my mum's brothers, my uncle, got married. He moved to Italy, got married, and I was lucky enough to get a new cousin. So I got an extra cousin. So that for me is is like the biggest gift of last year to have a, an even bigger family and we get on so well that's the thing it's like a brother and sister kind of thing going on and that you know i've only got one brother so any other siblings yeah great and yeah just one big happy family and yeah i've got my other cousin across the street obviously my dad's side of the family but so it's just weird all these like when you've got family that are around your age it's just better Otherwise, it's full of old people, to be honest. My uncles, you know, they're fun at Christmas. Love them to bits. But um, when you've got someone your age, you know, you can relate to. And so we were nice enough to take them around town every day, whoever it was. And then after that, we had more family come from my dad's side. So my dad's sister and my uncle, um, they came over. That that was after Christmas Day. So, but before, build up to Christmas... Um, so we had my uncle here and his new wife and the daughter. So we we got up to chaos, basically. We caused trouble in London is what we did. One of the nights we were lucky enough to go to Camden. Um, yeah, uh, I've got, that's the story I've got to tell, actually. And anyone who was in, well, George, if you're watching, that was a great night, wasn't it? And we're going to have you on the podcast soon. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, so guys, in Camden... What a long story. Me, my brother, my new cousin, Laura, and my other cousin, Fabio. We all went down there because um, it was my brother was invited to like one of his friend's birthdays. But funny enough, another group of, unbeknown, unknown to us, another group of his friends were down there, including George. So we went down there and we bumped into them. It was like, what a coincidence. It's like, so there's me, like, the bar's the bars in front of me. My cousins are there. My brother's there. And on the right is, like, the entrance to the, the bathrooms. Like, on the right of me. So I'm just there, and then George walks out. I was like, oi, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You know what I mean? We're both like, what? It's like, what a great coincidence. And that was in Camden at Ice Wharf. If you know Camden, you will know where that is. But that wasn't our final destination. That was only the beginning of our journey, because it's pre-drinks. You got you can't just roll up in the club sober. You don't do that. Who does that? So we didn't do that, and <laughs> yeah. So we went to the electric ballroom in the end. After hanging around, um, I don't know. What did we? I can't. Someone wanted someone wanted to buy cigarettes or something. I don't know, or or food or something. I don't know. Anyway, some random geezers come up to me and like. And I was like, um, I, I, you know, as you do, I was like, bugger off, I don't know you. Obviously, I didn't say bugger off, I said uh, a, strong, a, a stronger word with an F, let's just say that. Um, and he did ever so kindly bugger off, basically. But that was quite funny, because like, I don't know you, why are you talking to me? Piss off, you know. Something along those lines, but with the F word. Um, 
So everyone's like, wow, you, you absolute legend. So then my my newly acquired cousin is there trying to teach George Italian, which is this quality quality uh, moment, right? Like, like memories for life. And then obviously we, we went to the ballroom, in, the electric ballroom in the end. Getting in, uh, so a few people got kicked out. There's always, always someone carrying alcohol on them that you you can't do that. You can't bring that in. So that was quite funny. And then all our mates were like, "Oh, my friend, you got there in blah blah blah." I was like, "No." Nah. So, but that that was me. I, I was waiting outside the front because everyone else went in, um, and me and my brother were waiting for them to take us around the back entrance to get in because I can't get in the front. Camden being Camden, it's never going to be that accessible, is it? And I've always known that through the years. So I was just a bit nervy about that, like, how am I going to get in? I'd been there before a few years ago, I don't remember it being that accessible, but it was. I'd been there for a concert for Royal Blood, so... In 2011 or something. If you know Royal Blood, if you're into that kind of music. Um, yeah. Can I just say, guys, I'm loving this mic. I just like, it's so professional. Blue Yeti mic, if you if you didn't already know. You can't really see it from there, you can see, like... The end of it, but so yeah. Back to the podcast. So we we get in there. And, well, I actually to say that before I go in there, I met someone outside, some random geezer. I was like, all right, I'll see you in there. You know what I mean? Like, well, you would tr- talk to random people when you're in London. That's what you do. That's London, 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 in it. <laughs> um. So yeah, we got in on the back entrance. So we're just in there. Um, bump into more mates, of course. And funny enough, I ran into an old friend from primary school. So like, when you're like, like, it, it, those of you who don't live in the UK, it's like from ages like four or five to like eleven. So yeah, um, that was that was good. Bump into and another friend of his who went to the same school as, as us, but left in like the third year. So I couldn't remember her, but yeah, so. With a lot of people we knew, which was nice. And the music in there is more rock based. I don't know. It's a bit random. It's not like all just. It's not all hip hop, if you know what I mean. Like you'd expect in some places. But Camden is a bit different. So for my cousin, Laura, it was the first time she'd been in Camden. We're like, you've got to go to this place. You're going to love this place. Like she likes that kind, that kind of place. You know, being from. We've grown up in Napoli and places like that. It's not that different, really. I mean, I was saying, like, brace yourself because this is weird. She's like, no, no, I've been to Napoli, mate. It's far worse. (laughs) Well, there's some nice areas and some not so nice areas. Like London. Camden, you know, it's just... The thing that gets me every time is the homeless people. Like, it's the worst place because you're bound to get some drunk guy coming out of a pub or whatever trying to pee on you. Like, because so many people get caught just by a wall just trying to pee. We caught a few guys who were like, no, well, look away, guys. <laughs> it's like one of them awkward moments for them and you. Pro- probably more for them. Well, depending how drunk they are. So we we had a great time just till like 3am, I think. But yeah, there's a couple of drunk geezers in there. Just There's always one that's like, oh yeah, can I can I uh, put my drink here? No. No, mate, bugger off. <laughs> Again, and you get random people trying to dance, but you're like, no, we don't know you. But we had a good old sing song. The song we really sung was probably Mr. Brightside by The Killers, because that's just a great song overall to sing it when you're drunk and when you're with people you love. And it's just, it's just a great time. Because it's, it's like a sad song, really, but it, it gets all the emotion out, like, because you, you literally shout in the lyrics when you're at that stage of drunkenness. Not that I drunk that much, to be honest. It's just everyone else. So it's contagious. Um, but yeah, so we're there till like 3am. It's just weird to meet people I haven't seen for years as well. And we didn't want to leave in the end. We did, and we, we, we took George home as well. He lives down our area, so we had a good old chit-chat on the way home. Music, of course. My cousin, she knows all, all, all the these Italian rappers I, I've never even heard of. Hip hop over there. Well, it's not hip; it's more rap. So I I got to know all these on the way home, and probably actually every day they were here. We did, 
I did get to know some sort of Italian rap, which is actually very good. It's actually really catchy. Um, so I'll probably talk about that on another video. The ones that really get me. But um, So yeah, that was a crazy night. Um, Camden, I've got to go more often. i just got to go more often. Do more late nights like that. Because um, I hadn't done that for a while, that sort of thing. So it was nice. I hadn't, well, I hadn't been to Camden since June. And that was too long. But it, so, but my cousin Lara had arrived from Italy maybe two days before, nineteenth, three days before. Yeah, so twenty first or twentieth. Yeah, twentieth we went around London, like showed them the lights, Leicester Square, Covent Garden. Um, it was really fun. It's always fun going around London. And same old, you know, tourists. Uh, we, we go to the, to the usual places in Leicester Square, Covent Garden. We just like being around there. Um, all the usual street performers. I can't remember that day actually because we've done so much since then. Um, but most nights we're out somewhere drinking or socialising with more more friends of ours. Like you know, like even the other day we're we're at the pub and just everyone's there. Like everyone I know. Like. You don't know who to talk to first. You're trying to, you know, you feel bad for someone that you haven't spoken to more than someone else. So anyway, that was the build up to Christmas, Christmas Eve, yeah, at my grandma's and Christmas Day actually. And I didn't actually watch a proper like Christmas movie through and through the whole like throughout the, the whole time because it was so busy. Was that a bad thing? No, I don't think it was a bad thing. If I'm honest, probably a good thing. It means. You're actually doing something. Because last Christmas we were so bored. There was no one here. So And me and my cousin just get along really well. It's just... It's surreal. Like... I've got a lot of cousins that I see as like... Closer than cousins or like siblings. But we just get on really well. And this Christmas I realised that. Because a lot of my cousins I haven't spent Christmas with ever. And Fabio was here too. He's been in England for two years now. Turned 28 the other day. Today, actually. It's the 5th, yeah, today. So that was nice. And I can hear my cat actually screaming outside. Yeah, no, anyway, this cat is freezing. Our cat's always cold. Because it is 3 degrees. But anyway, so the whole time... My cousin was saying, like... Can you take us to Primark? Take me to Primark. I've heard about this Primark. It's really good. It's... You know, obviously Primark is quite good, isn't it? All, all the things you can get at a small price, a low price. So you have to take me one of these days. To the point that we almost took a Christmas Eve. Like, no, that's the worst day to go. The worst day. So we managed to do that in the end, but after Christmas, like, 27th. But um, all the while, every evening we're going to a different pub. Um, meeting more, some of my brother's mates. Which, which was funny, because... Uh, she ended up having a crush on one of them. And we told him after, he was like, really? No. Nah. Well, no, he was like, of course. Why Why wouldn't she? <laughs> so I was like, no, nah, mate. I, I was like, no, nah, he's, he's, I think he's got a girlfriend. Leave it at that. <laughs> and so they did. But um, she's like, How's, every time she asks, how is he? And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> It changed the subject, like, no, I don't know him. Because with someone that's like, she's like a sister to me now, um, you get really protective, don't you? Like, a normal brother would with a, normal, with a real sibling. You just do, don't you? You're just like, no, no, no. Don't do that. <laughs> but you can't control people, can you, ever? And that's, I think of me at that age, at 20. Um, I wasn't that brave at all. Like, I wasn't that crazy. I'm more crazy now, probably. Than my, I compare myself to other people my age. Like, by the time you get to my, you're probably like, oh yeah, I might as well act like an adult now because I am. But you're not. You're just a man child. I'm just a man child, really. Aren't we all or or girl children? I, I don't know. No, with geezers we never grow up really. We ne like I know people like in it. 
friends of my dad's and his clients, like, they'll be in their 70s and they got proper good banter, if not more, than some younger people. I'm not being ageist to anyone. <laughs> um, it's just how it is. I'm going to get done for saying that. And I know. Nowadays, copyright for just saying something or thinking something, anything, that someone else might have thought. I don't know how many of my videos this year are going to get demonetized. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, we had a lovely Christmas day. So much banter. You know, family time is always great. And then my cousin Fabio was trying to show everyone his um, personal training like technique, techniques, and moves like because he's well, he wants to be a personal trainer. That's the the goal. The 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 goal he's going for. I don't know why I'm looking at well, you got to look up because you got you're working up towards something. So yeah, it's his birthday today, so we're gonna take him out at some point. I don't know when he's working. He's working today, so we want to you know. Say thank you for being here because the, the laughs are just unbelievable. We always have a laugh. So, yeah, we're just uh, grateful to be with the family, trying to make the most of it because I knew they were go my family was going back, like my cousin and my uncle and my aunt, my new aunt. <laughs> um, I knew they were going back on the 28th, so I was like, we've got to make the most of every day. We're together every day at some point. So then I think it was the last day, 27th, we we took her to Primark in the end, so we're like, okay, let's go. We went to the one in Watford in the end, if you know Watford at all, because um, it's quite a big one. So, we thought, okay, we'll come with you then. We'll make a day out, an evening out of it, because my parents had gone out with my my uncle and aunt and another set of uncles and aunts. I'll get onto that in a minute, but yeah, so they went out. Um, so we're just the young people. So what we did went Primark, like probably. Late afternoon time. Then from there we just got takeaway pizza. As you do. And along with all the all the, the rap music you could long for. Or we just... Music that we liked over the years that we'd play. Just like, oh yeah, remember this tune or this tune. Or listen to this tune, you know. Or because my cousin is actually trying to to uh, be a singer right, in some ways. Like she can rap really well. Like, you just look up the lyrics, and she was, like, literally getting all the words. I could never rap. Like, I'm, it's not in my DNA at all to rap any, or even sing. I, can, I would sing, but, like, well, you've seen me every now and then on here, but not really. More of an ad-lib thing going on. Singing is not for me. It's not for me. I mean, if you're good at singing, then fine. But not me. Definitely not me. Uh, but I love music, you know, and that's how we related. I related to my cousin a lot. Like we both love music. When you've got a passion for something, you should follow it. Really, you should follow it, because you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna regret it if you don't. So that's what I realised about my new cousin. Um, so then I left, and I was like depressed, obviously. But I had my other aunt and uncle from Milan come on the twenty sixth on. Boxing Day, and they were staying with us here. So, uh, these are actual real uncle and aunts, if you know what I mean. Like, my dad's sister and, his, and her husband, um, their daughter was here in the past, like, for about six months, staying with us. So, that, you know, so I'm really close with their daughter, who's my cousin as well, my first cousin. So, she's like a sister as well. So, to have her parents here was like, you know, yay, more family. More banter. And of course. That, that's what we love. Isn't it? That's, that's that's what Christmas. And New Year is for really. So with them we went just so many places. Around London. We One of the days we went to Bath. Uh, where they have the Roman baths. And the Roman like structures. Buildings. Ruins. And they're still discovering more. And Bath if you must know is near Wales. Might as well. Well it's, it's really hilly. It's not literally near Wales, but you get what I mean. It's in that direction. <laughs> Two hours to get there and back, though, to get up really early for that. But we also took them to the British Museum because my uncle is really passionate about Rome and all that stuff. And 
we found some Roman ruins that were actually from my hometown in Italy. My dad's hometown. So, my uncle's hometown as well. Canorza, so... That was good, you know, a few artefacts from there, which we don't even have back home. There's more of them in England than there. It's quite funny, really. Uh, but I love, I came to love London more than ever. I mean, we went up to the uh, Sky Garden, where you get a good view of the Shard. I've been there many times on the vlog last year. Um, I didn't vlog that day. I mean, I didn't vlog over this time, because there's too many crazy things going on. Too much drinking that I can't really put on camera. I did enough of that. <laughs> Too many crazy moments and like moments you just want to cherish, like between you and the other person and family. You can't just put it all on like well you can. Some people do. But yeah, I didn't anyway. I I've filmed there many times. So we went to the Sky Garden as well, they loved that. And the thing that got me the most is when they got back, my cousin sent me a long message saying thanks for having my parents and cheering them up. And, you know, making them feel good. Because she was working, my cousin. So she couldn't be with them at Christmas anyway. So we thought we you know, come to England. Come to London. Spend a week with us. My cousin would have come as well, but she was working. So, but yeah, we had a great time. And so she sent me this message saying, like, thanks for cheering up my parents. They needed it, you know, because um, I probably haven't told you guys, but my uncle isn't very well. He's, like, on strong medication for... Uh, well, it's like he had like a tumour, basically, a growth on his brain and one on his lung. And he's taking medication that shrinks it. And he's okay. I mean, it's not a big stage, like size of a 10 pence piece. And so, he, you know, he had a few side, like back pain and stuff. Side effects from that started. But so he, this was like last year. So since then, he's been a bit under the weather. I mean, he had to stop working, but he's well enough to travel and be with family and have Christmas. So that was fine. So that was really cheered them up, my my cousin said. So I was glad that we could do that. And we're family, what, what are we for? That's what we're for, if anything. You know, in difficult times. And this year we had a lot of them. That being one of them as well, for my cousin. So I've been just keeping in touch with them. Uh, my uncle, more than anyone, is keeping on top of it. He's fine, because he's continued his passion of drawing and art. I mean, he had to stop working, doing his normal job for Wool's Ice Cream, of all people, in Milan. Um, he had to stop that to get better. Well, he can't work in this condition. He's very, he's quite weak as a result. He can't work like a normal... Like, he's well and all, you know what I mean? Like, he looks he's fine. But he can't work, like, with, with the stage he's in. The state he's in. If you know what I mean. But he's taken up this art course and he's doing he's always been very good at drawing and sketching and he's done like portraits of me and my brother that look like photo like the photo just redone so yeah he's got that i mean but he's been fed up a bit but he's not been down so much he's just been bored so we need to to keep him active you know let him see a bit more of london and we did we saw bath as well which was amazing a great day out. I mean, I wish we spent more time there. Went around the Roman baths, really. That's about it. So, yeah, bath. Like I said, I'd love to go back there again. So, we got back from bath. It was, what, was that the 29th? I think it might have been the 29th of, yeah, December. Yeah, of course, December. What other month? Yeah, so we got back. That was late as well. But every day we'd been eating at home. Together. Just wine and whatnot. And my cousin Fabio was with us. Because obviously they're, they're his uncle and aunt as well. And he wanted to be with them. A few of the days he wasn't. But when he was we had even more of a laugh. <laughs> just the debates we were having. Like one day it was like. On the way back from Bath it was two hours. My uncle was just going on about ancient Rome. Like where did you get all this? When you're Italian, you're supposed to know a bit about ancient Rome. But at school, they're a bit like, meh. You know, just a random stuff. We did more, like, World War Two and Greek mythology. And Tudors and Victorians. Not so much Rome, because... But I, I, I do gather, from what I gather, they're legends. You know? 
You, you ever seen Life of Brian? Bloody Romans. <laughs> that film just gets me every time. Release. Roger. That's just not fair to Jonathan Ross, is it? Taking a mick out of someone with a lisp. It's, like a, no it's a normal thing. It, it's a normal part of life, you know. Who is normal? But yeah, so... The Romans. <laughs> and the history behind them is just amazing. So we had to take him to the British Museum. But that wasn't until the New Year. And we had New Year's Eve at home. My grandparents... Well, my granddad... My grandma actually was ill after all the cooking over Christmas. She's still ill, but she's alright. She had, like, flu. But she's alright now. No worries there. But yeah, so she stayed at home. My, my granddad came. My uncle and aunt were here, obviously. Um, and a few friends, you know. And last year, New Year, I was just... I don't know. It felt different. I was a bit more... I, I was more down. Because of what happened the year before. Um, but... No, I just... Last year I was just really like thoughtful, like just sitting there thinking like New Year, okay, what does this mean? You know, trying to actually think about it, what's going on. But this year it's more like I'm not planning what I'm doing. I'm just gonna and I'm gonna work hard, and I've said that already. Um, and try and make the most of the times you know when you're away from work or with family or friends, which I did a lot of, and I I feel like I don't know. My job, as much as what I do on YouTube, my job is just to cheer people up, if I can. Um, I appreciate people that do that as well. Just brighten your day in some way. If I'm doing it on here, personally, when I meet someone, family and all that, I, I feel like that's my job. I, I don't know why. I've never really told anyone that. I feel like it's up to me to do that sometimes. Instead of being negative, you know. Because I could easily be. Um, anyone can be it's easy to be but it's you're better off being like facing it with a positive way in a positive way with a positive outlook on whatever situation like the past year that's what we had to do every day or at times me you know how ill I was in October that was the most annoying thing um, so this year I was more like ready for it let's do this than last year. And yeah. Fireworks in London are always great. To watch people like. Oh they did it differently this year. No they didn't. It's the same every year. You know. And it, <laughs> what it kind of is. And I saw so many. Of my favourite YouTubers. Doing their end of year. Like videos and. Year reviews and stuff. And gave me a few ideas for mine. Still think I could have done my review. Video better. Because I was trying to mix like what went on between other YouTube YouTubers, you, YouTubers, went what went on with them and what went on with me personally and what I did on YouTube. So I focused on that to keep it positive, really, to keep away from the negative stuff. But of course, that makes you stronger and it makes me enjoy the fun times more, and it gives I don't know, it can give you a sense of humor sometimes. Like, to joke about serious things sometimes. Not, I mean, like, offending anyone or anything, but, like, you got to keep it light-hearted. <laughs> Christmas does that a lot. Alcohol helps. <laughs> but at the same time, it's the time of year you want to give back and you want to be nice to everyone. <laughs> the rest of the year, I don't know. I said it before, why not? Why can't we do it all year? Why can't we help the homeless all year? And some people do, but a lot of us, I don't know, we just feel more kind at Christmas the the movies I guess you see it in movies you know someone who's like a Grinch or like really like hates life turns it around and by the end they're like yay happy ending <laughs> yeah uh, that's just in the movies isn't it <laughs> most people just stay in in that that mindset some people just hate Christmas um, but yeah we've got to talk a bit about the ups and downs of Christmas you know food basically now we had a turkey but we, <laughs> we cooked it at home and then we brought it to my grandma's because we were late there just more space just they got three cats they would have had to one of my uncles would have had to leave go home and feed their cats and then come back 
And my granddad likes a little nap in the afternoon. After he eats. So so we stayed there. My grandma was doing that. Turkey and everything. And I'm not a fan. But I'm not a fan of turkey. But we had plenty of other foods. Um, so didn't go hungry. That's for sure. But yeah on Christmas. It's just like. The pressure of that day. It's like. You need everything to go perfect. You don't want to argue with any family. Which I can't avoid doing sometimes. And I just said I'm here to cheer people up. But I am arguing half the time. So there was that. And in the middle of like what trying to watch a movie, a Christmas movie. Trying to open the presents. Get ready and look very nice and fresh for Christmas. Fly if you will. However you, you, you regard yourself. When you you dress nicely, elegant. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of words you can use, but yeah. So we're in the middle of doing that, opening the very few presents you get by the age of twenty five, and yeah. And then we went to my grandma's and got drunk basically and ate food. My problem is I drink before I've even started eating, so then I don't eat properly. I mean, it affects that if you know what I mean. So I had to avoid that this time. Because so many events has happened. Just down in the booze before. <laughs> but I did acquire a taste for gin. So that was a good thing. I mean. That's the good thing about Christmas. You get presents like that. And you get to my alcohol. You know. Things you need. Give me some pants. Some socks. Give me give me a new. I don't know. A new scarf. <laughs> I got a snood actually. Not a scarf. But though. In, you know, I got enough scarves. It might as well have been a scarf, but... You know, I got a few things here and there. Assassin's Creed for my brother. The new game, I haven't even played it yet. I've not even opened it. Um. Yeah, I mean, at Christmas, you just... Together, aren't you? You don't have time for anything else. Like, you forget about, like, all your personal routines. Like, watching YouTube, I normally do a lot of that. Didn't, obviously didn't. Every now and then, but I didn't have that much time. Which was a good thing. It's always a good thing. I'm not moaning or anything, but um, you don't get any time to yourself to like. Well, you do. You do, depending on how many many family members stay in your house. In our case, like you know, together we we were together, so it didn't matter. I didn't. I stopped caring about where we were going. Just enjoyed it really. Like you're not fussy when you're with family, as long as you're together. Like that's why I don't care. Like whether we, you know wherever we're going. And it was just really nice to have more cousins around the same age, similar age. Like, I keep mentioning that, I can't put it into words. And with WhatsApp now, I'm very close with a lot of my cousins. And especially Laura, so it's like having another sibling. And I'm just grateful, you know, that other people can... I don't know. I can help other people feel better about themselves. Because one day she said to me, like, look, you're the only person that doesn't actually, like, annoy me in some way. <laughs> I, I, I was like, wow, really? I thought I annoyed everyone. You know, ask my brother or anyone else. <laughs> but, you know, she was like, really, you're the only one that, you know, I feel that doesn't, I don't know, not go out of their way to or not, but, like, I don't do, do anything that annoys her, like. I don't, like, I'm not, well, your parents are one, you know, they, they're they going to annoy you at some point, <laughs> or you're going to annoy them, you know, so, that makes sense, but, you know, I'm the only, really? I, I was just grateful for the compliment, I was just, uh, this, this kid understands me, like, we've got an understanding here, and that was the, probably the best thing of Christmas, of course, my other uncles and aunt as well, uncle and aunt, <laughs> Get your plurals right. But yeah. I just decided it was over. So it was like. um, The first. No the second. When everyone was back. And my uncle and aunt had gone back to Italy. Everyone had left. So I was like. That day I was just really down. So I was just. I don't know. That was one of them. That I didn't want to do anything. I was annoyed at everyone. And I was depressed. We all have days like that. But it was like. Yeah welcome to the new year. Like. The change in 24 hours of how I felt about the year. Well, it was just just that day. You have days like that. It's been a bit of a muddled up week this week. It's like midweek going back to everything. 
everyone back to work, even me on here. I just miss everyone. Like, I, I love what I do on YouTube, but I miss everyone too much. Like, sometimes you think, like, what's the point? If we're going to miss them more after. But that's that's what makes it fun every time. Like, when you're far away from someone, or your family, in this case, you know, you're on WhatsApp, so you're always near them anyway in some ways. Or you communicate somehow. Skype or whatever it is. Emails, whatever. Even if it's on the other side of the world. Like, my other cousin. Um, she works as an air hostess, so... We're always in touch on WhatsApp, of course. She's flying around the world, Egypt. She's in Egypt. She was in Egypt. And Vietnam before that. So, as far apart as we are, we're still always talking. Which is a great thing these days. And it's probably weird from someone my age saying that. You get old people like, oh, this technology's good these days. Oh, I love these mobile phones. Internet, wow. I'm just taking a mick. <laughs> my granddad's like, can you teach me? How to use the internet. I was like. Uh, um yeah. Sure. Coming to the guy who. Got Wi-Fi only a year ago. <laughs> so at my grandparents house. Now it has Wi-Fi. It never used to. It used to be like the dead out place. Where there's no Wi-Fi. There's just nothing. No internet. TV's only got analog channels. It's got free view. No sky. That was always the problem. <laughs> Because Saturdays as kids, me and my brother would be at my grandma's. And oh, I'll tell you what, though. Every now and then we'd go down to the toy store with my uncle. It was, it was like a pound shop, basically. Pay a pound, you get a toy. I bought, like, this... Um, it was about a metre long. It was a bazooka. A plastic one. I don't know what it fired, like, tennis balls or something. I can't even remember, but, like... I remember being on the stairs at my grandma's house, just, like... Feeling like a boss with, like, a fake bazooka on my shoulder. And try, tr like aiming at my brother, trying to shoot him. You know, kids at that age is really violent. You know, now it's like, oh yeah, peace. War's bad, you know. But when you're that age, you're like, violence, yes. Blood, guts, no. <laughs> but I, di I did like my violence back then. <laughs> like, I'd see a violent movie, and be like, yes. Even now, every now and then. A bit of gore doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> I do watch The Walking Dead, after all. But yeah, back then, it was just like, memories... And that was one of their older houses. They've since moved house. But yeah, that older house didn't have Wi-Fi, obviously, because... You, at that time, I don't think people really had Wi-Fi. Like, when they were living in their previous house. O over 15 years ago. So, yeah. But, yeah, just great to be... to get Even with my grandparents, like... We don't spend a lot of time with them, really. Like, a whole day, you know. We go and see them every now and then. At Easter, you know... I had a cousin here before Christmas that I was staying with my grandma as well. But yeah, it just felt bad because uh, she just does a lot for everyone. Like, grandma, Italian grandmas, like most grandmas, just too friend, too nice. So, oh yeah, let me cook you this and I'll make you a cake and this and that. And it's, anno it's annoying sometimes because she's just like, oh no, no, let me do it, you know. And some people just say, give in and say yes. Like, you, you know. We all helped out, but still felt guilty in some ways. Because it's Christmas as well. You don't want anyone stressing out. And I'll tell you what, food at Christmas is always stressful in our house. Always. <laughs> because there's always something that's going to get burnt or something. And Christmas Eve was like annoying because uh, my newly acquired cousin and her mum, they don't eat meat. And, well, they don't eat fish either. And my cousin Fabio, he's allergic to prawns, so... He couldn't eat them, so I'd do a separate thing for him. So that was anno that well, not annoying, but a pain. Well, in my eyes, anyway, I was thinking, like, oh, no, you've got to do that as well. And for me, I don't want anything to go wrong for anyone. Like, I want everything to go fine, even though it might not. And I've learned my lesson expecting things to go fine in my own life. So <laughs> it's never gone to, is it? <laughs> when it comes to cooking, like, you've got to over overcook something. But it went good, yeah. And just a lot of wine. <laughs> and then we finished all the wine. We're like, where's the wine gone? My cousin, she was like, give me more wine. I was like, we don't have any more wine. <laughs> then I'm, I was texting her Christmas Day, like, yeah, we're coming over. And she's like, well, please bring alcohol. I was like, yeah, don't worry. I got you covered. We've got plenty for Christmas. 
We're bringing all the wine. Don't worry. Did I say how much I love this mic, guys? Um, but yeah, just get in the comments. Like, what was your biggest pet peeve of Christmas? Or the best thing that happened? The best moment? I had too many. I can't say one. But like the moment when my cousin said, you're the only one that doesn't make me angry or annoyed. Like, I, I don't, you know, I don't get emotional. But I was like, wow, thank you. I take it as a compliment, you know. So used to annoying people, but like in a joking way, like but with my brother especially. But that's what we do in this family, just banter the whole time. Like the, there'll be phrases or words that <laughs> we just remember forever from certain times. Like from I don't know, I can't really translate what the banter that was going on sometimes. But yeah, I got all my most of my relatives are straight from Italy anyway, so. It's easy because I can speak Italian. So, if they're from some other country, be like, "Whoa," be like, "I can't speak that language." <laughs> um, but yeah, and you notice the difference between young people in Italy and young people here. When I was twenty, I certainly wasn't that open-minded to music. Anyway, I can't. I didn't even like that many different types of music back then. Now, yeah, because I've had so many influences from people around me and my own passion just to know more about different types of music it's unbelievable like I, I relate to a lot of people in that way but then when you find out they find out you like something they don't they're like okay I don't know but I, I like most music um and my cousin showed me a lot of music in Italy that I'd never followed before because I follow the most of the mainstream but none of these rappers these kids nowadays um it's just amazing to see. But then the type of music young people like in Italy compared to here is less mainstream most of the time. But then again, they're all listening to the stuff we listen to here when it comes to hip-hop and stuff. And, you know, they do like Drake a lot. But, of course, a lot of young people there like the classic Italian stuff as well, which I've which you, you can't not like. But, you know what I mean? Everyone has like, their own identity of music now is different. I know in Italy it's even people are more conservative really. And some like older people would be like, nah, what is this rubbish? Because you've got the classics. But everyone has that, like my dad, like the music he likes, his like family might not have liked like his parents might not have liked it. You know, they wouldn't have. Because it was very rebellious as well, the stuff he listened to. And he has a similar opinion of some of the stuff I listen to now, but my dad always says I've got a good taste in music. And I tell that as a compliment. Well, it is. It is. I hope I do. But, I mean, you always think you know a lot until you don't. And, you know, true knowledge is knowing you know nothing. I've said that many a time. I can hear the cat meowing again. Should probably let it in. If my brother cares, he'll let the cat in. Poor cat. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. What was I saying? Something about someone about... I don't know. See, I, I'm losing it already, guys. <laughs> New Year, brain's gone. <laughs> yeah, like Christmas, pet peeves. I didn't have many, I'll be honest. It's just like... You you eat one huge meal and it's like... It's, it's too weird. The rest is just sugary stuff. Which is good, and alcohol. But I find it weird. And then like, to get back to the normal routine... Of eating at midday and this and that and you know getting up at a normal time it's really annoying because I can't get back into the schedule like the routine I hate the routine sometimes but it's part of a new year and any year you know just fight through the the annoying stuff but it'll be a while before I'm back in Italy with some the amount of friends I made out there that's another time I just still look back on with such fondness. Christmas and the summer. Because everything in between was a bit dodgy, to be honest. A bit negative. <laughs> and I enjoyed my power chair football a lot. That was the only the other upside. And the progression on this channel. The starting of the podcast. It's been so much. And I don't know how professional to keep this. I might just, just keep rolling no matter what, you know. 
through the, all, all the uh, phone calls we got earlier. <clears throat> Why not? What car is he taking? Anyway, if you're hearing this in the audio, you're probably better confused. Better. I mean, really confused. Get your English right, John Luca. What the hell? New Year got to start by speaking slang. But in Italy, we always do that. I mean, the dialect from our town is just another level. That's where all the banter is. Like, I can't translate it. But literally, we're talking about the one of the big, most funny moments when my dad's sister and the the husband were here, my uncle and aunt, when they were here at home. It must have been like after we came back from Bath. We're talking about the Romans and history and all that. And how like Shakespeare, how we loved Italy. Like I brought up the subject, like saying like, that's what you know, what he's famous for loving Italy and and Romeo and Juliet and all that. And my dad was like, okay, Shakespeare. Now Britney Spears, and everyone just cracked up because, yes, they both have Spear in their name, but what's that got to do with Britney Spears? From Rome, we're talking about Britney Spears because of Shakespeare, because he shaked a spear. I don't know if that's true, Dad, but <laughs> it's kind of with Britney Spears. And everyone just cracking up. Like, what's what's the point of saying that? And Fabius is on the floor cracking up, laughing. Because it's just one of my dad moments. <laughs> We've all got someone in the family who just cracks us up with that, their own way of being without even telling any jokes. I got a joke, I got some bad jokes that my uncle told me. Ah. <laughs> uh, did, did jokes work on YouTube? I'm not going to even go there because they're quite like, offensive as well. Nowadays, you know, demonetization and. Vice writing a fake news article about you. About you? all. Oh, I said about properly for once. About. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then I do speak good English. But yeah, imagine, you know, Vice. Such a reputable news source, as PewDiePie found out. Or so many other news sources that... Who was it recently? I think Huffington Post? Or someone that to apologise to PewDiePie. About... One of one that the things they mentioned that wasn't even true. That's quite funny. Question, guys: Do you think I should get another camera just to keep it interesting on the on the the video version of this podcast? For audio, it doesn't matter really, but I hope the audio is better with this mic because it's just seamless. The sound is just from what I've heard, it's so much better. And. Just glad I got it because it makes a big difference. And you can regulate the sound and everything and where it receives the sound on the mic, like from the side or the top or whatever, depending on how many guests you've got. But like I said, I do plan to have George, a good friend of mine, on the show. Um, especially because he made that movie about me. Now that movie was just something else. And if you've seen my latest, my first episode of this year, you know all about that. It's in that episode somewhere. That mashup of my best moments. <laughs> um, but yeah, such a great holiday with so much banter. Like I said, I was depressed that day, and I was like, "Why am I like this? Like nothing could get me out of that. That on on, on the second, that way I was feeling. Um, and here we are today, and I feel a lot better. I don't know. Been out last night. That's probably why. Alcohol still in the system, you know. But yeah, I, I get days like that, and I will get probably more. Um, it's just that winter time, winter depression. I don't know, but obviously Christmas and all that. And now you got well, you got summer to look forward to, but you got a long few months with probably snow before then. I remember last winter was just so depressing, because first of all, like the I like, I was ill like twice towards like February. Till like March when it snowed. It snowed in March. I mean, the world is messed up because this year, right now, it's snowing in Italy, southern Italy, Sicily as well. And we don't even have snow here yet, but yeah. So last year, I mean, even made a vlog in the snow, which I had to delete since then because of copyright. I deleted it like two weeks ago because of copyright issues and the new like laws they're, they're putting in. But of course, I still have to reapply. To monetize my videos. And I'm still trying to do that. I'm trying not to get worked up about it though. Because when it happened I was just so annoyed. 
I think I made a video about it on here, saying how they blocked them. Well, they didn't block my videos. It's just they can't be monetized. I don't know if it's because I got copyrighted too many times, but I haven't got a copyright strike, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, normally when I start these podcasts, I do tell you what I'm going to talk about. I have that normal script, but screw that. I just need to talk. Like That's when I find I'm doing my best on this podcast, when I'm just talking. Yeah, I change the subject here and there, and maybe it's hard to keep track, but it's just me with my real personality, my passion, emotion, <laughs> just talking. It's just, it's different to when you do a podcast, because the engagement with the view, you know, you're engaged in the conversation more than me, because, I mean, I'm making this really for audio, um, and any ex- extra camera stuff I'm doing is just solely for the YouTube version. And, you know, I've seen the way other YouTubers do it, they just Literally same thing on every platform. Just a video version. But no one's looking at the camera and stuff. It's like on the other side of the room, you know. If you've seen Impulsive, the way Logan Paul does it. Just the camera at the back of the room and they're all there in the middle. But it's a different layout because they've got guests. And there's like more than one host, so. I need a co-host. And a few guests. It's just be different with a guest. Because you can follow a discussion more. Like me, it's just talking to you, so it's different. It's just... Me waffling on about good and bad things. Like someone asked me the other day, um, like what style are you going for with your podcast? You know, comedy. You know, I was just like storytelling. I think if there's comedy in there, there's comedy in there. Um, but it's hard to keep everything comical. Like, you have to be really good at comedy. To you know, PewDiePie, for example, he's he's quite funny, but every now and then people take his jokes the wrong way. Unfortunately, it's a shame. Such a legend, and YouTube just—they don't like YouTube. Doesn't like PewDiePie. I don't know why. Poor Felix. <laughs> I don't know why YouTube just does not approve of him. And you never get his videos in like the recommended or suggested bit. I always have to search his channel and then go from there. But you know, when when you want to watch a video that's really good, you. You will go out of, your, out of your way to find it. Whether it's in the recommended or not. However bad the changes on YouTube are. I've been saying it for a year. And I remember seeing that vlog with Casey. Where he was talking about it. And these cha- the, the initial changes of... You know, initially you needed... 1,000 subscribers. 4,000 hours of watch time. Something along those lines. Would have got you monetization. And that in last February around that time... They changed it, and since then it's been a lot more difficult to even picture myself on the level of some of these other YouTubers making money off this, for real. Um, Which I want to do, I mean, why not? I mean, then I can make better videos for you guys. So it's all giving back. Uh, Like I say in my life, I feel like I'm here to make people happy and cheer people up. I don't know, maybe that's a corny thing to say, but, like, I feel like I do that as well. I hope I do. Um, I get good, good, uh, good banter in here and there. Um, it's just, in Italian, it's just another level of banter. It's just so much more vulgar, what we say. Don't think we're all polite just because we're, you know, I don't know, cultured. We're not, are we cultured? No. Well, Maybe. No, culture is when you're in one country and you like stuff from other countries, I guess, to put it simply. <laughs> so we just, everything, well, we do, my mum, in terms of cooking, doesn't just cook Italian. Don't just think we eat pasta and pizza every day, because that's racist. <laughs> no, well, it is, it is actually, it's stereotypical. But no, we, we had turkey, you know, Christmas. How Italian is that? Not at all, it's really an American thing. Thanksgiving and all. I have an itchy moustache. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> no worries. Because I have you guys just to to talk to, so it's fine. House is empty. Brother's gone out. That's just how I like it for videos. Like I said, I miss everyone, but sometimes you need your just peace and quiet and 
when I make my videos, I just close myself off, do it, you know, enjoy, I enjoy the moment as well, I, like, the amount of videos, I just realised, like, wow, I had a lot of fun making that, it started happening probably around, well, I would, if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't have started ever, but it started, like, when I started making the, like, last winter time, kind of, like, around the time I got ill before that, I think, or just after, there was a stage where I got in a, in the in the rhythm of making loads of videos, probably three or four a week, if not more. Um, these weren't vlogs; they were more like reaction videos, and like trying not to laugh videos. They didn't come out very good, but I had a lot of fun making them. And since then, I learned a lot about how to react to other content, other YouTubers a lot more. At the beginning, I never really did that. It's more of a vlog, trying to be daily, but it never was. It was close enough. But I was watching an interview with Tanner Fox on the Impulsive podcast. Tanner Fox, he's like, was he like 18 now? But he was a kid when he started on YouTube. And he had loads of su subscribers, like overnight from his videos. He, did, he started with like scootering and like doing stunts and stuff and things like that. It went viral and then from there. Um, but he was, he was saying as well, like, um, you know, it's... It's more than like five years he's been on YouTube. Logan Paul was saying to him, you inspired me. You know? So that's like, okay, wow. And I don't copy these guys, but I see what they do and I think, okay. Okay. I know what I'm aiming for. I mean, I, I mean, Tanner Fox, he has a Hot Wheels car designed based on his car. Hot Wheels, you understand? Toy cars, like, when, growing up, that was just, before any any sort of iPad or video games, toy cars, man. I've got a collection of them here still. Hot Wheels, you understand? Like, of your own car, they've made it into a Hot Wheels car. And this kid's got that, and he's 18, and he's on YouTube, you know. Rich as hell, that's not what I'm talking about, but... To have something made after you, a big company like that, that means that you've done something right. You know, not all these people have been to uni and been... At school, to school, like, to the end, if you know what I mean. Left, dropped out of school and stuff. So, it doesn't really matter what you've done in the past, you know. Like, when you pass an exam. Say you failed it ten times, the people looking at the result won't see that. They'll only see the end result. The A or the B or whatever it is. Or whatever kind of exam it is or whatever. So, for me, I know I can do it as long as I carry on working. Whether they're monetized or not, I don't care. I've got iTunes and SoundCloud and other outlets for my media, my content. Content creator is what I am. And let's hope it's a good year for the YouTubers that made so many mistakes last year. P point and case, Logan Paul. Case and point, what do you say? Case closed, Logan, I don't know. I don't know, I'm trying to sound good clever <laughs> man went to uni can't even speak english uh <laughs> i can and i can speak italian and two different dialects of italian so screw you <laughs> no uh, i've learned so much about the videos i make in general i made different types music based reaction videos about certain bands that have inspired me and give me passion so much like arctic monkeys Red Hot Chili Peppers, Billie Eilish more recently, who is probably one of the best her age when it comes to music. The most inspirational and brave and out there. And just, yeah, try not to be normal. Just being normal is the worst thing you can do. I've learned that on this channel. And being afraid to make a fool of yourself in some ways. Like, there'll be videos where I'm acting really silly. like Or just trying to sing. For example, and I'm making an idiot of myself, but for the fun of it, you know, not in 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 a in a way that affects other people, but for the laughs, you know. But I've seen a lot of people on YouTube like fall apart. We've taken it too far to try and entertain. Just be real, be you, because that's the only version of you that people see every day, if you allow them to. I mean, in the beginning, I was just so scared of what people thought of me, on YouTube. And probably in my younger days as well. But not now. 
Like, um, I've always been truthful as a person. So that's not changed. While I do the most annoying thing in the world and adjust my chair. But yeah, I mean, be yourself. That's what I found on YouTube of all the videos I've made. The regret I would have sometimes is that I'm too robotic, like, in the way I talk sometimes. And the way I act, you know, you've got to have emotion. There's no need for fake stuff, though. I mean, some people will fake it <laughs> till they make it. Um, I mean, so many big, you know, Jake Paul. A lot of people criticised him, like, saying the whole relationship with his ex-girlfriend is all fake, was all fake. And the breakup was just to get views. Whether it was or not, I don't know. I mean, I think it was genu like a genuine breakup. But when you're that famous, you know, all that money, all that attention, it can put pressure on you. And to be normal is just impossible. And these are the type of people that want to be normal, that need more of a normal life. Because they, if they ever knew it, it's long gone. If they ever knew a normal life. And YouTube is not a normal life. Some people on here, like, living a normal life and doing this on the side but you can't do that it's got to be your life i mean maybe you can but like the discussion with that on that podcast i was watching with tanner fox you know he was at school when he started vlogging and you can't really do both you can but it's difficult and yeah like like i said going back to me imagine if i was doing it when i was at school or even at uni I, you know be people you know watching it and taking a mick Possibly, you know, to go through that, will, you know, that won't be easy. Wouldn't have been easy. <laughs> Can't imagine it is for anyone who is still at school or uni when they're doing something like this for the time and maybe the awkwardness. But like I said, you've got to be yourself and don't be afraid of what people think. As long as you're not offending anyone in a bad way or saying something really, that you know, outlandish that could offend someone else you know you're not overly judging people like with an and shining a negative light on anyone as long as you don't do that you're all right as long as you don't get copyrighted for the music like me every time every time i kid you not it's just got to be really careful with the music these days it's got to be non-copyright you know so you search it on youtube and then i download it from there so that's the best way and with, this isn't really a YouTube tutorial, is it? But you get people who say, oh yeah, I'd love to do YouTube, but you've got to be committed. I mean, a good friend of mine I was talking to recently, he said the same thing. Like, I was like, but you haven't got the time. I mean, but he fixes cars and stuff. So for him, if he was to do it about fixing cars and engines and stuff like that, and car parts, he'd be fine. People would watch it. I mean, you, you put the right tags in there. Which I keep forgetting to do, by the way. I might have to... Actually, I might have to edit my last video. Put some tags in there. That's <laughs> how you get more views, apparently. So I've seen, even on my own videos. But I should be more responsible. <laughs> Just tag every video, it'd be easy. Depends where you are. Like, I do it when I go to Wembley or Tottenham. You know, for, for the games. Um, Like, anything you can tag. To do with that video. Or just... Random stuff if you want, but... So yeah, anyway, my friend... He's actually moving out of London to Stevenage. Not that far, but he's moving. Freedom, but like... I can't believe it, like, that's amazing. House party. House party, I was like, yes. You invite me to a house straight away, I don't care. <laughs> uh, this is great, yeah. A great time. But he's got no money now, like, obviously. You're moving into a house, you know. Um, good times, and I'll I'll definitely go there at some point, sooner rather than later when he when he's all settled in, housewarming party he needs, and just I mean we used to do that back in the day, around his like his family house, his parents would be out and we'd just all be there, at least twenty of us or more, it was just great great times, when it was like that age where like oh you shouldn't be drinking you know, you had to hide the booze when the parents came home. Obviously, they knew, you know. No one's that stupid. Just so obvious. Come home with a group of kids running around screaming. Or like laughing their heads off over nothing. 
it's so obvious. Like when, when I have kids, if I have kids, it's gonna be like, well, you know what's going on half the time. Like my kids, no, never. No, they're good boys. So <laughs> my parents say about me and my brother, but they don't know us. <laughs> no, they don't drink very much. No, they don't go out much. No, <laughs> not at all. No. Another one of my mates the other day said to me, you know, he's like, are you watching the Spurs game? This was yesterday, actually. Are you watching the game? I was like, no, I'm in the pub. And he was like, I could have guessed, you know, because you practically live at the pub. I was like, yeah, I know, but it's not a bad thing. <laughs> and it, bearing in mind, it's kind of still the holidays, I don't know. It's not, but, you know, any excuse. It was Friday, what do you want? Down the local pub. Just too many people I knew, like, more than 10 people. Like, because we were just gathered there, somehow. Just a coincidence. Not really, no, but... <laughs> it's a pub, what do you want? The old drunk fella trying to... There was one guy going around the pub trying to introduce himself to everyone. He's like, um, my name's, uh... Well, you couldn't remember his name. Phil or something. I was like, yeah, this guy definitely belongs in the pub. And we're just looking at each other like, okay. Just move on, mate. Stay away from my mate's girlfriend, otherwise he's going to knock you out. And I don't want to have to clear up the mess. You know, when you've got mates that don't quite live around here. And they're going to get in a fight with someone that that's a local at your local pub. It's not good. <laughs> everyone knows everyone, basically. Um, small world. It is a small world. And with all these videos I made, it's just made me realise that more. Like with the Instagram stuff as well. The followers I've got on there, so thanks to them. To anyone who's been part of the journey that's going to roll on. Um, and I'm probably going to make some mistakes this year. I'm settled for that every year. You know, it's like new new year, new me, new diet, whatever people say. It's not. It's just the same old you. But you, you're just one year wiser. Greater than you were. I am greater than I was in some way. In some way or another, I've learned something. I hope. I hope you have too. Maybe not from me, maybe not, I don't know, but in general. And just make the most of the great times. You know, you got your times to be sad, your times to be happy and have fun. Just don't forget which is which. You know, don't be a drain on other people. Don't drag other people down with the way you feel. Because we all get depressed days, like me on the other day, and I was just telling my cousin, like, look, I feel crap today. You know, she's like, yeah, I understand, it happens to all of us. Um, but, yeah, I, I may be 25, but, uh, you know, we all need, at uh, any age, you all need, like, someone else to tell you to that it's fine, you know. It happens to everyone. Um, but I feel like when I'm messaging people, it's to cheer them up too. Even if they're not showing, like, that you can't, from text, you can't tell if someone's down or not. Or even, vo well, voice message, maybe, but just to cheer other people up to keep them occupied to know that I'm there I say hi you know at least some of my mates so we do you know every now and then just check in how are you you know what's going on what you're up to as work even if you know what the answer is going to be people, it's just good to do that with people even if they're far away like I've said before with the family I've had near and far and there'll be people nearby that I'll see for less time that I won't see and they live nearby, you know. People further away I might see more often. Or have more fun when I'm with them. More banter, more just... You know... T times to... To remember and look back on and go, that was great. Like my whole summer holiday. Again, the best ever, probably. And that birthday vlog went well. <laughs> yeah, what happened with my brother and... His ex happened. Like, still friends, I'm not going to talk about that. He, do, he doesn't want me to and I won't. But yeah, they were like in that video at some point together. It was like, can't really show that now. It was such a great feeling at the time like, to pl to have played Cupid in some ways. And go back and watch that video, just do. Because it's just so funny. My crazy 25th birthday and it was. And it was that was weird because seeing my, my cousin's reaction yesterday on his 28th was like... I don't know, like, solid, I don't know, he thinks he's getting old. I, I told him you're losing your hair, mate, he's not, but just to make him paranoid, you know. Good cousin I am, aren't I? 
But yeah, when I turned 25, I just looked at my phone and was like, oh, it's past midnight. It's the 28th of August. Man's 25. Damn, I feel, well, you know, that's the first thing I said. Not true, of course, you know. So not true. But I was like, yes. I made it. But at the same time, I was like, I feel old. I think I'm getting up now. But like, compared to everyone else that was around me, yeah. Some of my cousin's mates were young, like, not even 20, some of them. And I'm just there, like, the oldest one, like, not the maturest one at all. Far from the maturest one. People younger than me that are far more mature than me, I know that. <laughs> but you've got to be young at heart, however, whatever age you are. And I realised that there, like, at a time, if someone was that many, four years younger than me or something, I would say, like, okay, no, we can't really be friends, or I can't hang out with you, but now it's like, what the hell? Whoever. <laughs> I'm that lonely. <laughs> no. Um, doesn't matter what age someone is. You can relate to them. Or you can not. It just depends on the person. Not the age. The age is nothing. To do with it. Nothing at all. And I'm not ageist. Like I said earlier. <laughs> but I realise that more now. It doesn't matter. You can be friends with anyone. doesn't matter what age. Like the opportunities. And the possibilities are endless. And I realised that in the summer. Not necessarily now with the new year, but in the summer before the other ba- the bad things happened. That, you know, are unavoidable, like, things that happen in life. You lose people, then that's it, but you gain new ones as well, new friends, new family. But, yeah, so... Uh, overall, as a year, I just can't put it into words, it's been so surreal. In a good and bad way. For the family as well. The losses we've had. But Anyway we're still here. Um, and we make the most of the great moments. I went to two weddings in the summer. And got thoroughly drunk at both. Loved both you know. So it's great to be a part of that sort of thing as well. And with me I'm lucky because I've got family here and in Italy. Probably got more friends here than family. But in Italy as well I've got some really close friends. There might as well be family as well. And I didn't really realise that till this year more than ever. Because yeah you don't see people. But you can still be close like I've said. And I realised it then. I thought well, they haven't, you know, I haven't spoken to them in a while. It's going to be like. Okay yeah well you're here once a year. so, But it's not. They, they properly love us. And so much though that we stayed longer. For a good friend of mine. It was her birthday. On the 1st of September. So we stayed for that. And that was great as well. And we celebrated my birthday there too. This is like another town. Where my mum's family are from. About an hour's drive from where my dad's from. Anyway, I'm not going to go into detail. I've done it before. It's just too confusing. But so that, over the summer I realised a lot. Of those sort of things like. Some people that are friends. You get on with more than your actual family. More than some of my cousins. Some I get on with more than others. Some I won't even speak to. Only literally once a year when I go. They're not out of malice. But just out of how it is. And just can't relate to some some of them. Just too different. I don't know. Not you know. I don't know. Just Some people you don't click with in the same way. Maybe you're not so familiar with some of them. Like the cousins that have come to England and been here. Stayed with us at some point. I obviously will not. I know them all better. But better. You know what I mean, and you can you have something in common, and you can resonate with that moment, resonate with them, and you remember the moments you spent together. Like I do it with a lot of my cousins. I like, just how I, I I go forward. I remember the times we were together. Like like for when when you you, you miss your family, and we always do. Um, especially when we've just come back, or when they've just left or whatever. So it's the worst time. <laughs> you got me at the worst time. Um, no, so much more power chair football to come soon. I've got a hospital visit next week. I'll be in for a few days, like I normally do, that all my checkups, all the health stuff regarding me. <laughs> it's never simple, but I you know, I got to talk to them and tell them that I'm fine, don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm fine and I just don't want anyone to worry like 
Because people like when you say you're in the hospital, like, oh my god, you're in the hospital. I was like, no, it's just a checkup. Calm the hell down. There's always one, always one person. Some nosy people just texting you like, you all right? I was like, yeah. You always get one. <laughs> uh, it's easy now with Instagram and all this, the direct messaging and all that. DMs, as they're called. DMs, you know. Direct messaging. I, at first, I was like, what are these DMs? I'm always a bit slow with these acronyms. Then once I got them, I'm using the acronym. And other people are like, what does that mean? Like, to end every message on my phone, or whenever I texted someone or anything, I just write KL at the end for cool. But that's not how you spell cool at all. But it's just how I just abbreviated it. And everyone's like, what does that mean? I never got what KL meant. <laughs> I don't use it anymore, because nobody gets it. But even in Italian, there's words that I always use at some point in a conversation on, twi- on uh, Twitter. WhatsApp. <laughs> um, yeah, and I get mixed up every now and then. Just add the old English word to the cousins of mine that do understand a bit of English. Most of them kind of speak English. So-so. Um, which is why they wanna, always want to come to London. Because they think they can speak English. They're like, okay, yes, hello, good morning, you know. All the stuff, the typical stuff. Compared to my Italian, is nothing. The amount of swear words I know. I mean, in most languages, the swear words are the things you learn first. But yeah, this is my New Year vlog. No, it's not. It's my New Year podcast. I keep doing that. <laughs> and I'm going to keep the mistake in there. Why not? But I've enjoyed how I started this podcast. This whole new idea. When I upload it to iTunes and SoundCloud, it's a, another type of satisfaction. Because I know it's not just one platform. I'm not throwing my eggs all into one basket. And it feels like a vlog to me, just like a long extended vlog. Um, like I said, um, if you prefer, I might use a second camera just to switch between. I like to look over there and there's another camera. And then here. I don't know, it might work like, boom, boom. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm out of stories for today, I think. I'm just grateful for you guys to have listened and been here. More of these podcasts to come. It almost started as a book review, didn't it? There's me talking about all these books that are on the shelf here. Like I said, do look up the book by The Rock, the biography called The Rock Says. It's very motivational if you're feeling down. We all are, it helps you, it will help you in that sense. I've got too many books here. One, I'm looking at now, the history of NME magazine, which is like a rock magazine here in London. And I've read that and I really, at some point I'm going to read it again for sure. And it's all about the history of this NME magazine, which is like rock based, like, you know, Bob Dylan over the years, uh, Jimi Hendrix, The Kinks, Beatles, Running Stones. All these bands like were based around London at some point or another. And this book covers interviews with them. And it's based on a guy who worked at NME magazine and interviewed many of these famous people. Hung out with them in the local pubs. And it's just a very detailed story of an era of people that a lot of them aren't around anymore. Like you know, David Bowie, for example. Jimi Hendrix, of course. Um, a lot of famous rock stars. Queen, you know. So it's a book about all those London-based musicians. And there was a lot of them, because London was the place. Probably still is for music in some ways. Obviously, yeah, America, you make a lot of money there as a musician, but back then they all just hung out in London. And it was all fairly normal. Now it's more, there's a division between the normal people and the famous people. Even though, credit to a lot of the younger musicians who want that connection with their fans, want to just hang out with their fans. Of course, you get the odd crazy person. You know, they get mobbed when they go out, these famous people sometimes. But, yeah, that's not me. <laughs> um, not yet. This cat is really meowing. I'm going to have to let her in at some point. I'm going to have to end this podcast at some point. But I don't want to, to be honest, I'll be honest. I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> I haven't watched any football. should probably watch some football. Or, I don't know. I've got plans for a new video... 
about the 21 Savage new album. I might have mentioned that on my last video, on my first episode. But for me, it was my last video, yeah. So 21 Savage, I am greater than I was. That will be coming soon. I don't know when, I don't know when this will be uploaded. The 21 Savage video might be up already. When you're watching this, that is. I mean, I'm going to start it as soon as, probably next week. And then, like I said, the week after I'm in hospital, over the weekend, I might vlog there. Might be a bit of fun. Um, see what trouble I get up to there. I always, I always uh, cause some sort of trouble. Or it's just good banter, but let's see. Let's see how that goes. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Enjoy your week. Whenever you're watching this. I would say Merry Christmas, but Happy New Year. <laughs> it is New Year, and on it's 21 minutes in to this clip of this podcast. This part of it. Um, so that's time to stop. Because I am Louise 21 forever. And the way I'm going to switch, as 21 Savage says. I'm going to leave you there, guys. That is it for this podcast. Episode 6 of the podcast. Podcast number 6. And they say most podcasts don't make it past 7. But I'm going to still be here next week. And the week after and the week after. So stay tuned. Take it easy, fam. And as always, peace. Remember, be nice. Not just at Christmas all the time. And happy 2019. I wish you all the best. And I'll see you soon. Ciao. Save the future. Future is now. Before, and I usually mess up. But I learn. You know what I'm saying? I come back stronger. I'm not talking ignorant. You know what I'm saying?